topic for today's webinar is Technology and Cognitive Support Strategies and Tools for Organization and Planning. Last time we met in this series, we talked about tools for, um, for memory. And so this time we're going to talk about tools for organization and planning. And what we'll be doing is uh, a couple of different things. For me, a, a, a webinar is always more valuable if we have, if we start with some background information or some underlying information about the topic uh, that we're discussing. So today we will be doing uh, first some underlying principles that can be used when you're selecting technology to be used for cognitive support and specifically today for organization and planning. I want to give you a little bit more information about the research about cognitive support and what good cognitive support tools should look like and um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Also, I want to encourage you to be thinking about um, someone you know who might benefit from uh, some cognitive support technologies for organization and planning um, because later on in the session we'll be looking at some specific technologies and I want to encourage you to uh, share with the group anything else that you might be using uh, to, for helping the people that you work with be more organized. The, we'll, uh, so, And then in the last part of the session we'll be talking about specific tools, so we will um, we'll be showing some and also giving you information about several more. It always helps me to know who you are, so I'd like for you, if you would here, to click on the poll that you see on your screen now and choose uh, how you are represented in this group, um, I, I can see the poll results coming in pretty quickly here, and I'm going to give you just a couple more minutes to um, to click on those options. We have uh, a propos there. I think we've got almost everybody signed in, um, as you might expect, because it's a, a webinar about... Um, assistive technology and technology for cognitive support. We have uh, quite a number of people, almost 40% of the folks here identify themselves as AT specialists, but also special education teachers, OTs, PTs, SLPs. And um, I want to particularly thank the administrators in the group and the paraprofessionals in the group who joined us today. Um, your contributions are essential and uh, enormous. So uh, thank you for being with us today. I also see that we have one person who is from a, either a group home or a vocational provider uh, setting. So we'll, we've got quite a range of folks. Hopefully the information that we have today will be useful for uh, each and every one of you. I hope you all walk away with at least three things to think about. The topic for this session today is organization and planning, um, cognitive supports for organization and planning because, and I chose that topic because I think it's more descriptive and, and, uh, easily understood by, uh, by the bulk of the population. But one term that we hear a lot these days that re specifically relates to organization and planning is executive function. Uh, executive function is, here's a definition, cognitive skills required for planning, completing, and evaluation, evaluating the completion of tasks. So uh, it's really the, the skill of thinking about what it is you're doing and what you want to do and being as organized as possible about it. There's lots of different kinds of folks with disabilities who have 
executive function uh, difficulties or plan difficulties with planning and organization. Uh, the groups that I think we often think about these days are uh, kids with autism, uh, people with attention deficit disorder, um, and also for many of our students with developmental delays, many of our people with developmental delays, um, executive function, organization, and planning is a, is a difficult task. Uh, I see that Elizabeth has a Elizabeth Gomez Rios has a question. Elizabeth, if you want to post your question in the uh, chat box, we can address it. Um, and while we're waiting for that to happen, I did want to say that um, I am a teacher by training. I was a teacher for about 20 years and coordinator of the Oregon Technology Access Program after that, and a few years ago I retired and um, began work as an independent consultant, so I do a lot of um, a, a lot of this kind of professional development. The reason I say that is because I'm going to say kids with disabilities and students with disabilities a lot, and I, I realize that there are many of you on the on the call who uh, are working with adults and older folks, and I apologize. It's just my bad habit. Um, so people with disabilities. Um, before I go on to the next slide, I wanted to point out the citation here about um, for this definition of executive function. The, uh, this particular definition comes from the Cognitive Connections Executive Function Practice, and you can see the web address here. This is a, a private practice group of speech therapists who work with people who have executive function disorders specifically. I found a lot of good resources on this website, so if it's a topic that you're interested in, I wanted to uh, encourage you to uh, take a look at that site, and we'll have a few others as we go along today. Um, whoops, got too fast with the mouse there. Okay, executive function skills. Uh, executive function skills are divided into two kinds of skills um, in the literature, and I wanted to point this out because I think that it's important for us to think about uh, both these categories of skills, I think it's useful in uh, determining what kind of uh, strategies we're going to build to uh, to help people who need help with organization and planning. The first group of skills are, are skills that help you control your behavior. So you'll see on the list there things like paying attention, being motivated, regulating emotions. That first group, while we can um, help people learn to pay attention better, be more motivated, regulate their own emotions, those skills are um, difficult skills to learn, and they take a real investment by the individual in um, making personal change. They're really much more internal kinds of skills then the list uh, below that of activities that guide behavior. So if you look at the list of activities that guide behavior, you see those more specific tasks of planning, organizing, monitoring, solving problems. Um, many of these kinds of activities that are listed on this slide are um, things that we can teach but also that we can Use uh, strategies, assistive technology, uh, visual visual schedules, and things like that to help a person almost immediately. So um, when I saw this list, I thought, well, this is a lot like the difference between, um, for instance, teaching a person how to do better uh, writing. Uh, I know many of you on the call are occupational therapists, so uh, teaching a, a person how to write better, more clearly with a pen or pencil, 
and the difference between using uh, tools like keyboarding, uh, iPads, mobile technology to uh, voice in input to write uh, in a different way. So the act, what we're going to focus on today are those activities that guide behavior in the ways that we might help people be um, more productive in organization and planning. Um, these are examples of the kinds of tasks that we hope that people uh, will be able to do to be more independent and be more functional in their own lives. And what you see is um, a list of tasks, all of which could be uh, assisted with assistive technology. So we're going to look at tasks like these as we think about the um, the topic of organization and planning today. There are lots of ways that people are challenged in uh, organization and planning. and uh, So one of them is not being able to capture what needs to be done. And then here we have the first typo in today's PowerPoint. I somehow always manage to get at least one typo in. So this is the one I found. If anybody else finds one, send me an email so I don't do that again. But um, not referring to the, the list or calendar, whatever needs to be done. Uh, people with executive function difficulties sometimes are confused just because they see everything at once. I asked you earlier to think about a student that um, that you know and um, the kinds of difficulties that they might be having. Um, and I see here that uh, Maria has sent us a message that says, uh, motivation is difficult to ex assess for some of my students. They have multiple physical and cognitive disabilities and the typical things don't work. I'm thankful for my assistance because they help me brainstorm. I think that, Maria, you're, you're really right on with that. And when we think about helping with uh, organization and planning, with execu executive function difficulties, I think that's probably true for many of our students, that uh, it's difficult to assess how they're feeling inside, but that list if we go back to the uh, list of activities that guide behavior, I think you'll see that planning those that second list is a list of things that um, are more easy to observe and ones that we can address more clearly. So that's the that was the point really of this slide was to talk about um, the difference between knowing how a person's feeling or or uh reacting internally and if uh and what they're doing and what we can observe and and measure on the outside um, and parcel says that if an executive function disorder is present understanding what the motivation is and uh, waiting for the benefits whoops my screen moved on here uh, waiting for the benefits takes time when most students need immediate gratification to keep going. So that's what we're going to talk about today, and I think you're absolutely right. Um, we're going to talk about those kinds of activities that we can um, help with immediately. So here's three suggested reasons for difficulties with organization and planning. I want to go to the next slide, which is a poll again. And um, I want to ask you to um, submit some of your ideas. I think some of you have been doing that in the chat box. Submit some of your ideas um, about the kinds of things that cause difficulties with organization and planning, uh, whether it is motivation, whether it is an inability to even identify what needs to be done, <laughs> excuse me, uh, whether it is uh, being overwhelmed by the situation or the 
of the results. And um, I see that we have people doing that in two different ways. One is in this poll box, and the other one is, uh, here's a chat message from Susan who says, I work with many kids with autism, almost all of whom use visual schedules. The schedules are always a list of pictures, usually broken down to a part of the day at one time, but even so, there are some kids who can't handle more than one or two pictures. So again, that inability to to sort out what's important, to identify in uh, specific settings the kinds of things that need to be addressed. I can see that many of you have strong ideas about the causes or the uh, the evidence of uh, executive function difficulties. I'm going to skip to the poll results and we'll see some other results coming in. Um, hmm. I don't know how this one works. I apologize. I thought you, if I clicked on that you would see the results. So here's here's some of the things that people are saying. Long-term history of depending on others. Not connect the need for studying and taking home appropriate uh, materials, environmental distractions, learned helplessness. Mobility can be a real difficulty. Somebody mentioned mobility in uh, organization and planning. So um, lots of good ideas here, and there are hundred and almost 140 people on this call, so we won't go through... Um, all the responses, but I want to thank you. Um, for all those responses, and we haven't used this particular kind of poll before, so I apologize. I think maybe we need to, uh, oops, wait, maybe I can, nope, I can't display this one to you for some reason, but we'll capture that somehow and get back to you. Let's go on to, a slide that we actually saw before in our first webinar, we talked about the underlying principles of um, cognitive support technology, and that goes back um, to the um, the original time when we were talking about cognitive support technology is one of the most research-based areas of assistive technology. Um, and if you watched last time's webinar, you got we sent out a, as a handout a list of some of the research studies about cognitive support technology. And this was well, a, sort of a summary of some of the underlying principles of cognitive support. So um, a task focus. Rather than um, trying to measure motivation or some of the things that other folks have mentioned, we want to identify specific tasks that people are having difficulty with and then I help to identify solutions for them. And we've done that with things like reading and writing and communication and uh, motor skills for many, many years, but only recently have we really discussed understood that this task focus for executive function and also for um, organization and planning is really um, an important place to start. But the other place uh, to be cautious is in this idea of only a specialist necessary. Um, the more complicated the technology gets, the more special and uh, farther away from the uh, commonly available technology that we all have in our lives these days, the more difficult it is to implement. So our focus should always be on only as special as necessary and the simplest tool to overcome the barrier. Finally, we, with many of our folks with executive function disorders and, and organization and planning skills, we really need to plan for the supports that go along with the use of the tools. So we talked about this slide last time, but I wanted to um, give you some information from a research study that was done by Michael G. and Greco and Dan Davies. Um, they uh, 
looked at what were the features of technology solutions that should be included in the um, in any kind of technology that was developed for people with uh, cognitive support needs. And one of the ironies of this research is that um, a lot of the the solutions that many of us use on a day-to-day -day basis, we choose because they are so flexible and have so many options. Um, what, the, what Dan and uh, Michael Dean Greco found was that for people with uh, cognitive challenges, with executive function disorders, uh, with the kinds of difficulties that a person might experience, that might cause them to need cognitive support technology, some of those options were um, actually confusing and, and caused difficulties for folks. So clear, uncluttered screens rather than a million options. Um, consistent commands and features. So that from screen to screen, the technology says or shows, says the same thing or shows the same icon. Um, always consistently meaning the same thing. And I'm going to show you an example of that in just a, a few minutes. Um, appropriate sequencing and pacing, and also in this list, uh, options for changing the sequence and, pa and pacing. So uh, breaking things down into more and more uh, baby steps, smaller and smaller steps till you meet the needs of the person that you're addressing. Um, frequent and informative feedback, not just good job, but here, but feedback that talks about what you did right, what the right answer was, um, what, what the mistake was that you made. And um, for people with cognitive support needs, often a need for uh, multiple exposures to the same information. So this is a, a really good list of things to look for in the co cognitive support technology. I mean, one of the things that I thought about when I was putting up this slide was um, the, the experience that we've all been having with iPads. As we began to see iPads develop and the operating system be changed and improved over time, we saw originally more and more features for accessibility. We saw more and more ways um, that people with all kinds of disabilities could um, could use the iPad. But what I have seen most recently in changes in the operating system that I think applies to this topic of organization and planning and cognitive support in general is that we have most recently been given more and more options in the iOS operating system um, to limit the number of choices, the number of things a person can do, the, the number of different ways that um, a student might use the iPad. And a part of that is because we need some of the features that you see on this slide, some of the, the features of good cognitive support technology um, are ways to limit the operation of the of the device to things so that students aren't confused or disorganized, and then eventually um, give those options back as they grow and as the individual grows and changes in their abilities. So, with that in mind, I want to switch here. We're uh, just about at the halfway mark, and I want to switch here to um, talking about cognitive support technology options for organization and planning. So this is the show and tell part of the session. Um, so let's take a look at some options. The range of technologies is huge. Um, what you see in the picture of the different colored tape, it's not electrical tape, but in my life I thought it was. Uh, it's uh, colored highlighting tape so that you can uh, organize um, 
things by color in um, in determining how your day should go or how you put things away or things like that. Um, and then the the higher end range, the thing we're going to look at today is um, a piece of software called Picture Planner that helps people plan their days and know how um, how their day is going to go and what they should do to be prepared for it. There's lots of low-tech options for um, helping with uh, cognitive supports. And many of you mentioned uh, visual schedules, picture schedules, um, things like that as we were, as you were entering things in the chat box. But also some uh, support kinds of activities that can help people who um, have cognitive support issues to be more organized. Arrange materials in the order they will be used. We, I do that for myself every single day. That's what we do with PowerPoint presentations. Um, and also establishing clear guidelines and steps. I, I know that if, when you're in a well-organized classroom or a well-organized um, group home or work situation, people know what the guidelines are, what the procedures are, and um, they can, uh, everyone in the environment knows the same procedures and how to do things, what's expected of them. So that makes for predictability, makes it easier for people who have executive function disorders to to be involved. Another low-tech example I mentioned briefly is color coding of things. And I wanted to point out that a lot of these strategies that as we talk about organization and planning, are ones that lots of us use. Um, I color code my uh, PowerPoint presentation. So this is the second in a series of three PowerPoint presentations. If you remember, the, if you were joined us for the first one and you remember that one, um, the slides were all the same presentation format but blue the color was blue so and uh the third in this series will be the same presentation format but also a different color just to help me be organized about how i'm doing things we can do that with um post-it notes flags um tape on things but also in my classroom i often just used um different colored paper for different activities. So math was always yellow and um, reading was always, I think, a light blue. So we knew what the activity was by the color of the paper or the handouts that the kids were working on. So color coding can be a really quick and easy visual organizer. Um, several of you have mentioned visual supports and graphic organizers. There are a million resources for visual supports and graphic organizers, and I, so I wanted to just point you to these two as um, possible um, as possible places to go to look for resources. I wanted to tell you the the Florida Panhandle graphic organizers are. Um, pretty much all in BoardMaker software. So if you have that software, that'll be a really good resource for you. The ones from WestEd are more um, commonly used software, uh, such as um, you know, Word or, or Excel, things like that. So these are two really good resources. I see there has a, there's a question here from Mary Jo. Can you give specific examples other than subjects about how color coding is used with students? So um, I want to invite the rest of you to chime in. If you have examples of how you use color coding with your students, um, I know another example in my life was when I worked with with younger kids. Um, every child had a color so that they knew where their uh, materials went, their notebooks were that same color, um, 
Menno's materials were always pink, Menno's notebook, Menno's uh, cubby marker, things like that. So just help. Oh, and here's somebody who says helping patients organize medications. That's a really another really good idea. Um, color coding on. Oops, boy, now it's coming. In. When it comes in really fast, I, I can't even keep up. Uh, color coding. On visual schedules to indicate the teacher time, area of the room, specific table to go to, things like that. Um, in some autism classes, the different center areas are color coded so students know where to go and what to uh, what matches the materials or the schedule symbol. You know, my local hospital has um, carpet that is color coded so that if you go into uh, the X-ray department. You follow the red carpet, and if you're going to surgery, you follow the blue carpet. So I think we do that a lot in our lives, um, sometimes so much so that it's so natural that we're not aware of it. I'm going to go on to, there's a lot of good ideas coming in, and I am sorry that I can't um, share them all with you. Uh, here's a, one final one I do want to share about color coding. Uh, communication devices, so that nouns are one color, verbs are another color, pronouns are another color. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, the Cognitive Connections Therapy website, and I wanted to um, suggest that you take a look at their their planner. Um, in, it's a little bit different structure of a planner than I've seen before, and um, one of the things I like about it is that in their planner, they plan the activities and assignments that are due for that day, but also they um, plan, they ask the person to plan what they're going to do for fun that day, what they're going to, what things have actual deadlines. Um, it's a really nice planner tool um, that's available through Cognitive Connections Planner, probably for your Folks with a little bit higher uh, cognitive functioning people that would be able to read and fill in this planner. Um, the picture of it that you see on the screen is one that is completed, so it might um, it might be a little bit um, busier than you would hope for, but it really does some nice things. Somebody um, mentioned that. It immediately connects the uh, the time of day with the, the things that need to be done. So um, here's another tool for cognitive support. We're getting into basic technology, and um, one of the tools that I use to help people know what the next step is is the step by steps um, from from the AbleNet company. Um, rather than, and we often think of these as communication devices, but rather than actually using them for communication devices, <coughs> excuse me, um, we can program in steps so that the person just needs to hit the switch, um, hear what the next step is, do it, and then all we have to do is teach a procedure for hit the switch, do the task, do the next step and then hit the switch again to hear the next step. You can do this with a with a single step by step, or you can do it with any of the uh, single message devices that. Um, and we could line up several in a row, or a, sing, a message device that had maybe four buttons or eight buttons on it. So um, many message devices from lots of companies that you might think of, probably something that you have in your environment. Um, here's something that I, you may not have in your environment, and I really encourage you to take a look at this one also. This is called the Agenda Lifetime Voice Calendar. It's a, it's a calendar. You see they've got it uh, hung on a refrigerator, but it can, it can be used in lots and lots of different environments. Um, what it allows you to do is pick, uh, in the blue column on the left, you can pick the uh, month that you're talking about, and then in the 
in the numbers on the right, you can pick the day of the month where you're going to schedule something or say something, make an announcement. Um, and then what you can do is record messages into that day and um, that specific day and time. When that day and time pops up, the message pops up, a message light. Uh, will blink indicating that you have a message and then you push the today button to hear your message. Um, I, I talked to a mom of an adult who is, um, has developmental delay but is living in his own, um, apartment and she said this is one of his major tools. Now he doesn't necessarily program in the messages for different days, but um, he has a routine that involves checking that calendar uh, several times a day to, to see if a light has popped up. So um, just a tool that I thought you might be interested in. Another way to help with organization is with um, with planning specifically, is with tools like inspiration, kidspiration, um, so that you can mind map sort of all the kinds of things that you're going to need for a particular um, day or a particular activity and, um, and, and then turn that into text or some kind of a list that would um, help you create a visual schedule for yourself. If you don't have inspiration or kidspiration, uh, I want to suggest to you that you take a look at the Bubble Us website, which is, um, an, again, a planning tool, but it's an online tool and there's no cost to it. Um, so if you see here, uh, there's a switch, I mean a button right in the middle of the screen that says start planning, and that will allow you to create a mind map for yourself. You can sign into this website, develop your own um, account and um, save things, save plans and save mind map kinds of activities um, for future reference or you can just use this site uh, without creating an account to uh, to make a plan. We can't do, we can't really talk about cognitive supports without talking about some apps for cognitive supports, and this is one of my favorite ones, particularly particularly for young kids, but really for just about anybody. Um, the iDress for Weather app is a um, iPad app, iPad and iPhone. And um, the thing that it does that's very cool is that it it connects to your local weather channel or weather, some kind of weather service. Um, so the app itself does look up the weather for your location and then it suggests to you how you might dress for that weather. So it uses the internet to search for local weather conditions and then suggests what to wear. You can even in this app um, put in pictures of the individual's specific uh, clothes, you know, my coat, my shoes, my boots, whatever it is. So um, a tool that would help people plan for their day, know how to be ready for the day. Another app um, that I really like is ChorePad. It, uh, you can create as many different lists of chores as you want. This one is uh, uh, chores for... A particular day you see on the left, make your bed, brush your teeth, let the dogs out, empty the trash. And then one of the other features of this uh, weekly schedule is that the person gets uh, reward points for doing their chores. Um, you check off the tasks that you've done as you've done them in that column on the right side of the chore list. And... Um, that's how you get your points on the on the chore pad uh, reward card. After that, somebody who provides support has got to be there to give uh, to give 
the rewards or whatever it is that you've got planned. My video schedule. This is a little bit more expensive app, but it's one that um, is really valuable. You might want to try it, particularly if you've got a, a classroom full of kids or a group of people that you want to work on video schedules with. Um, this combines video mod modeling with getting organized and routines. So um, they have a library of photos and pre-made videos that pop up at a particular time, um, or you can create videos of your own to, or videos or photos of your own to create a video schedule. I have to laugh when I say this is an expensive app. It is expensive in terms of um, how much it costs compared to other apps, but I remember a day when I didn't even blink at spending $300 for a piece of software, so things have changed rapidly in our world. Here's another app. Um, this one I like because it combines uh, several different functions that help people be organized. And again, it's a $39.99 app, but it um, allows for customized picture schedules, customized visual schedules. It also lets you create story, social stories with voice, uh, voice output. And it has a, a countdown timer. If you see the the um, screen that shows 4 o'clock and a picture of some building, I don't know what that is, as the, um, as the time gets closer and closer, that green box will get bigger and bigger so that when the whole box is green, that means it's time to go. Um, that kind of countdown timer, whether it's this or the Time Timer app that we may have talked about earlier. Um, I think this is really valuable information for people who need uh, organization and planning support. And also uh, the second screen over that you see is a, is a choice offering, so a visual of what your choices are right now. What Here's two things you could do. What do you want to do? Um, I like this app particularly because it combines all those things into one app. So um, it could be used for um, for lots of reasons. I'm sure you're thinking about um, ways that you could use it. Here's somebody who said, I like Visual Schedule Planner from Good Karma apps. And... Um, Bambi says, I love the countdown timer and I prompts. I use it with my typical child to prevent meltdowns when it was time to be done with a fun activity when she was two and three, like playing in the park. Boy, do I know that one. i got a four-year-old granddaughter and a two-year-old granddaughter, and they both need that. I want to take just a minute and show you one piece of software real time so I'm going to share my desktop with you, and what we're going to look at is a, a piece of software called Picture Planner. This is it. Um, Picture Planner is a tool that was developed by um, Tom Keating and the people that he works with, and it's designed for people with uh, developmental delay, people with reading difficulties who... Um, have trouble planning their days. So I've set up an activity here for the demo person. Let's see if we can make that one go. Hello, demo, please wait while we set up. Week of March 31st, 2013. Okay, so what you see on the on the screen now is... Um, Class at 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, April 2nd. Okay, what you see, <laughs> what you saw... What you see here is the reminder. I set up a reminder that my class was going to start at 9.30 today, and um, and I can uh, go to the next. Well, hold them. Okay, the next button will tell me where it is, um, and there's a lot of options. But what I want to do is go back to, and show you how you set this up. So I'm going to say, okay, I completed that task. And I'm done Week with this. Okay, so let's. Um, what am I going to do at 10:30? At 10:30 a.m. on Tuesday, April 2nd. Where is the activity? 
Okay, the activity is, uh, let's go to the beach. Beach. Um, so we're going to say we're done with that. We're going to go to the beach. How are we going to get there? How will you get there? We're going to take the city, city bus. bus. I wish. And it's going to How cost much money do you need? Nine dollars. Zero, zero, nine dollars. Okay. What thing should you bring? CD player. CD player. Okay, I'm going to take my CD player because I want to... Whoops. What thing should you bring? CD player. CD player. Okay, well, as always, when you... De when you uh, demonstrate technology, um, you uh, see glitches, so I'm not sure what that's about, but for some reason I can't take my CD player. What you can see on the screen is um, who you could also add who you're doing it with, um, what you should bring, what kind of clothes you should wear, lots of options for planning an organization. Now, there's two ways to use this. One is for an individual to set up their own appointments this way, but also okay. Also, another way to use this uh, software is for a caregiver or somebody who works with a person on a on a regular basis um, to set up with the person these kinds of appointments and um, planning activities. Um, most often, folks are either printing this out and taking it with them, or there is now um, a mobile technology version of the yes, same software. So I'm going to get out of that and go back to the um, PowerPoint slides. What you see here is that it backs up to a server that's operated by the Cognitopia company. Um, I see Gloria sending us a message about how to download the, uh-oh, here, let me get out of here. <laughs> I want you back. So, there it is. Oh, okay. So, that's Cognitopia Picture Planner. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at it. You can download a free demo of that software, and um, I think you'll enjoy taking a look at it. One other similar tool for a little bit a person with a little bit higher functioning is called Schedule Assistant from AbleLink. It, it allows you to set up um, visual schedules and with voice output and instructions um, built right into it. You can put any number of appointments into the system. The most important thing, I think, to think about for all of this technology is that what we have to do is first determine the challenges that the individual experiences in organization and planning. And we, we talked about this before. You saw these same... <laughs> same bullet points with the same typo in them. Um, not capturing what needs to be done. Not referring to the list. So those are two very different things. So you can make yourself a list, but if you never look at it, um, it won't be particularly valuable. So a lot of what happens in organization and planning, particularly for people with executive function disorders, um, has to do with the supports that are included with the technology. Um, Gloria says you're seeing my desktop, so I don't. My computer doesn't think you are. <laughs> so um, I apologize for that. Um, I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll, this is the last slide, so we're just going to let it be that way. Um, my, my point here is before you start choosing technology for cognitive supports, you might want to take a look at the 
the student or the individual who's having difficulty with the, the task or with organization and planning and figure out what the specific demands of that for that student are. And um, finally, to then identify the the tools that you want to use for that person. Um, I, lots of material here. Gloria says um, that she's going to be emailing you a link to how to get these slides. After the session is over, you'll also get a short survey on your screen to tell us how we're doing. Um, so please do take that survey. I look at that feedback and try and make every webinar just a little bit better. Um, there we go. So I want to thank you for joining us again today with AbleNet University. You can get the schedule of live webinars in, uh, from this website, and there are a bunch of archived webinars at that site, including the one we did last time on cognitive supports. So um, thank you for joining us. If anybody wants to put questions or comments in the chat box, now we've got a couple more minutes before the, the webinar will actually um, end, and I see lots of thank yous. I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, it's always a pleasure to have such a, a great group of people, and uh, I hope that all of you got at least one good idea today. Um, thank you all for joining us.